Welcome back to the Viper Miner channel. Today, we're going to be building a flux node from the ground up. So what does that mean? We are going to build a flux node on one of these HP slim mini computers. This is an i5 uh, Intel uh, processor in it. It has a gigabyte uh, ethernet, several USB ports, and What's really nice about these is they only take about up to 18 watts, depending on what, how much it's doing. I can get the cover off. And it's compact. So the SSD drive, typically you have to swap out because you buy these used, and they usually come out with 128, either disk or SSD drive. You need at least a terabyte. And then they usually come with 8 gig of RAM which is enough for a Cumulus node, but I upgrade them to 16 just because it gives a little bit more um, speed to everything and expandability. You can actually then, if you decide to do a uh, Nimbus node, you'll be able to do that as well then. To start out, let's go over to the Flux uh, website, and that is runonflux.io. And you can read everything about the Web3 Decentralized, what Flux does, it, it is really an incredible project. I can't say enough about it. Um, I, my only wish is that uh, price discovery gets a little bit faster going here. The Go to the menu here and go to Flux Nodes is where we want to go. And it, you can look at all the live data and, and you can see what's going on. But we're interested in the, the hardware requirements right now. So we're going to be building a Cumulus node. You need a, a processor with two cores. So that could be Intel, AMD. You can even do an ARM. Uh, I've seen people do these with Raspberry Pis. The only problem is, is that that was $89, that HP Slim, whereas the Raspberry Pis are 200 bucks. I, I, I don't know why. Um, two cores, four threads, and then eight gig of RAM, at least a 220 gigabyte uh, SSD drive or even a, a NVMe drive, 180 megabytes of DWS. Now, anything over an i3, you should be fine. Um, and then in the ARMS, uh, which is a Raspberry Pi, or even a, I, I bet you probably can even do this on an Orange Pi as well. And those you can get, actually get hold of. They're just not, there's just not enough um, developers out there yet creating different paths and all that for that yet. Um, but for, for the purpose of Flux, I bet that would work just fine. Um, and then you need to have at least 25 megabytes up and down on your internet speed. And I want to cautious, caution everybody. When you purchase your broadband, typically from a, a TV provider, say the Spectrum, Comcast, uh, Fios from Verizon, whatever your service provider is, they'll advertise, you know, 40 bucks, 60 dollars for 200 megabits. Yes, you're getting 200 megabits down, but not up. Typically, that's anywhere between 1.5 megabits to maybe 10. Okay, and you need 25. So you need a true 25 by 25 up and down um, connection. The there's no way you can do it. it you, you will be last in line constantly. You'll never make it if you don't have at least 25. Um, and sometimes you can get that changed. Other times you may have to open up a business version of that uh, broadband company, you know, that broadband in order to get that. Um, you don't need a stack IP address, which is nice because uh, they usually charge you an extra 10 bucks for that. But you do need to have the 25 by 25. So in my case, I had a gigabyte up and down, so I'm not worried about that. All right, and then of course you could do a, new, a Nimbus, and then again, the, it's four core, eight threads, 32 gigabytes of RAM, a 440 drive. So if I were to eventually change my um, Cumulus to a Nimbus, the only thing I have to swap out is the memory chips, okay? Because I have 16 in there now. And then you need a 50 up and down. Again, I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm actually fine from an internet standpoint all the way up to the Stratus. Okay. So if anybody wants to host a Stratus with me, give me a call. 
Um, so this is where you get your hardware um, information. Step two after procuring your hardware is you'll need a Zellcore wallet, okay? And the Zellcore wallet is really quite uh, remarkable in the sense of it has a lot of, it, it's becoming more and more of my hot wallet um, go-to for my, uh, especially for alternative uh, coins. It has a lot of uh, uh, wallets out there that you can use. And we're interested, obviously, in the Flux. And you'll need a 1,000. If you haven't gotten your, your Flux yet, your 1,000 uh, Flux, you either need to mine it or buy it. And my recommendation would be Qcoin to go get that. Qcoin is a really nice um, platform to go trade. You can actually deposit money in there. Or you can swap out coins in there and sell and get into your Flux and transfer it to your Zellcore wallet. Uh, the Zellcore wallet is like any other. Uh, hot wallet in the sense of setting up, make sure you get your seed phrases encrypted and make sure you do two factor authentication. It will be required for you to run your node. Okay. Once that's set up and yet your, your um, flux in your wallet, the way you stake the flux, and we'll get that right now, is basically sending a thousand flux to yourself. So let's go do that. Okay. Once we have our wallet all set up with Zellcor. We need to move Flux into our wallet. So we either need to purchase it on an exchange, say KuCoin, for example, and then transfer that uh, purchase into our Zellcore wallet, or if we mined it, or if you already have it. So I'm gonna leave that up to you guys to get however you wanna get your Flux into your Zellcore wallet. I have a little over a thousand Flux in my payments part of the wallet, and the one thing that to keep in mind with Zellcore, if you never used it, you have different portfolios. And you can name these wherever you want, right? So if I go underneath nodes, configure wallet, and you're going to say add asset, and then flux would be over here, roughly somewhere next to the KDA. And you add that. I already did that part because I was already set up. That's how you would add an asset to that wallet. Now we're going to go back to our payments wallet because that is where all our flux is sitting. So we're going to flux and we're going to say send. And then we're going to choose account. And you'll notice that Zellcore is smart enough to have our addresses from our different wallets that are internally. So since we are sending this internally, we're just going to select nodes. And it populates the address there for us. And we're going to send 1,000 our fee is nothing or basically nothing so when you do transfer do keep in mind when you do transfer especially from an exchange transfer more than you need because you will have um, some fees transfer when you're purchasing it transferring it out and then again transfer it one more time so we're going to send that receive transaction. Yes, send. And the reason why we're doing this now before we even finish up setting up our server is because it takes a hundred transaction confirmations to confirm our transaction to be um, set for the node. All right. So now if we go to portfolios here. And we go into nodes. A few moments later. So a transaction has already occurred. It's just pending. I don't know if it's actually, let's see if it's in here. It's not there yet. So once it's been fully uh, vetted in, from pending over to uh, confirmed it'll start showing up over here but we can move on to the next step now okay now that we have our ubuntu server uh, image flashed onto our usb drive we're going to have to plug that in and then turn that on it's the moment of truth here to see if that worked well 
as this is booting, remember that if you don't have your computer set to boot from a flash drive, you have to go in your BIOS and change that. Um, almost all BIOS have it underneath boot, but each one's different. Okay, so our flash drive is working. It read the flash drive and saying try or install Ubuntu server, and that's what we want to do. So that's what we're going to select. And now Ubuntu is loading the packages onto the drive. And do make sure that you already have your computer, or whatever device you're gonna be using to install this on your network already. It should be plugged into your router or switch, whatever you're using. All right, so here, so it's kind of a basic uh, setup for almost any OS that you're loading. You can select your language. So we're gonna select English. And it's going to ask if we want to do some updates. And we're just going to say, go ahead and do it. Updates. And then here we're going to do a uh, Ubuntu uh, server full install, or we're going to do it to minimize. We're going to try the full install. It should work just fine for the flex that we're doing. And it's giving me my IP address that's going to be using. So right off the bat, so I that's the number I'm going to have to remember. So 192.168.2.101. And I'll show you how to find that in case uh, you forget it. We're not using a proxy server. And we can grab mirror. That's fine. And it, here's where it's asking if you want to use the whole disk for your server. And we're going to use the whole disk for the server. Some people put the flux on a separate drive. I have a two terabyte drive on here. Actually, I take that back, it's a one terabyte drive. It should be more than enough to do what I need to do and hold it on there. I could partition the drive, but then it really there's no real, no real reason for me to do that. So I am not gonna do that at this point. So we're gonna use the whole drive. And it's going to give me what it's going to use. And that's fine. That looks good. And we're going to continue because. Of it. Now, here's where you're going to put your username, your name, and all that stuff. So we're going to turn around and we're going to call. And your server name. So we're going to say Viper. Oops. And remember, YouTube does not like capital letters for their username. I'm going to say flux node or hyperminer flux node. There we go. Our username will be Viper. Oops. Doesn't like capitals. We'll choose a password. I cannot type today. And make sure this is a strong password because this is going to be out on the flux system, uh, set of nodes. So you want to make sure that uh, your password is a secure password. Now, this is very important. It's going to ask you if you want to install open SSH server. We want this. Uh, some people don't install it because it's a, you are leaving. Again, that's why we wanted a secure password. But this is uh, basically a punch in a hole into the server to remote in. And we need the remote in because I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to be doing everything from this actual node. We want this to be a headless node. So we're going to say yes to this. Okay. And then we're going to say done. And these are the packages that's automatically running. Uh, okay. So we got Docker, which is good because we'll need Docker. Now, if you don't have Docker on here or if your, your system is already, you already have a server, the Flex OS will load all the packages it needs. Now, this may take a little time uh, depending on how busy the network is and what your connection is to the internet. Remember, you will need 25 megabits up and 25 megabits down in your internet connection. So, a lot of people, I know a lot of broadband companies will sell you 200 
megabits or you know 60 bucks or whatever it is depending where you're at in the country and what service you have but the upload is significantly less typically between one to 10 megabits um, speed when you're surfing a website it's the the download number the 200 is what typically is advertised because most people surf and pull down they don't push up we're going to be pushing up a lot of data as well so you'll need that make sure you have 25 megabits if you don't then this is not going to work for you and you may have to look at a bps or changing your internet service provider uh, settings and to get the, at least the 25 by 25. a few moments later okay so it looks like we're finished so we're going to do a reboot now and this reboots and puts all the new packages in place. Now this boot might take a little bit extra time because it is doing all the updating. Now you notice also there's a failed uh, component here. It did load drivers for a CD-ROM and this device does not have a CD-ROM, so that's why it's failed. So red okay for that. It is on fine, but everything else should be okay mounted um, in the green. All right, so now it's asking us to remove the installation disk, which in our case would be the USB drive, and then we're gonna hit continue. And if this looks familiar, if you run iOS, it should, because it's running the same uh, Linux flavor. All right, so now we wanna log in, so you're gonna, Log in with the username and password that you used during the setup process. And we're logged in. Now, the one thing I like to do to make sure that we are okay before we go to our desktop is to make sure that our, S, our open SSH is actually open and working properly. So we're just gonna type system control status ssh and we are actively running so that's good so that means every time this unit reboots it will open up the ssh as i promised i'd show you how to find your ip address let's clear the screen that's uh, clear and you just type ip whoops and then letter a for address and there is your our address 192.168.2.101 and that's the address we'll need to log into our system. So let's head over to the desktop and we'll continue the installation. Now that we have our Zellcore wallet set up and we're transferring our Flux over to our node wallet, uh, which is a thousand Flux for the Cumulus node. And we went ahead and set up our server on our HP uh, mini box. Now it's time to do a couple things to our network in order to have the Flux OS work seamlessly with the Flux network. So what we need to do is open up some ports. So there's four ports that we have to open up as single ports, and that's port 53, port 80, port 123, and port 443. The 80 and the 443 obviously are for our secure web uh, dashboard via HTML in our browser. 53 of them, 23 are back channels for the Flux node. Then we need to open up for the Flux OS some port ranges for it to function with the server that we have that we're going to be out on the network with. And that is the port range of 16,124 through 16,128. And then Another set of port ranges, 30,000 through 39,999. And they're on the screen here. Now, two things. One, if you are looking at the single ports, you can see 80 and 443. Now, if you're already using those ports on that server or somewhere else on your network, you're going to have to isolate that. Okay. And then the second thing is, I really can't show you how to go do these because 
I use Ubiquity and it's a lot more advanced than most home routers. And so if you have a Linksys uh, firewall or a uh, even a watch guard or whatever firewall that you have, a net, uh, net gear firewall, all you got to do is Google that, the term port forwarding and the model number and the company that, that your firewall is, and you'll be able to see how to do this. It's real easy. Uh, typically, it's underneath a menu item called port forwarding underneath the firewall. And then you'll see either single port on a separate menu button and port ranges on a separate menu button, or they'll be together in the same page. It's it's just a lot easier. The firewall allows you to put a range in, so you have to type in every single port. So once you have that done, then all we got to do now then is go over to our server by an SSH connection. Okay, so if you have Windows, you'll have to download a terminal package, uh, a free one that works really well. It's Putty, and you can get that through your uh, store on your Windows box. And I suggest doing it that way so this way you don't get uh, uh, any kind of malware or anything like that. Windows has got a clean uh, set of code up there, programs. And then if you're using a Mac or a Linux, just open up a terminal and you'll be inside what you see right now on the screen. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type this command right here. So it's going to be SSH and then your username, in my case, is Viper Miner at the local URL that you have set for your device, which in my case is 192.168.20.5. Hit return. It's going to ask you for your password that you already did when we set up our server. And you'll come up with a screen that looks similar to this. So you get some information about the server. You'll get uh, some other information here about, uh, I can never pronounce it, uh, Kubernetes. Uh, and then how many updates you need to get done. Now, it's been a day since I did my last set of videos in this process. So the server automatically in the background does the update. So I actually have zero updates because I just checked as you logged in. Now we're ready to install our Flux OS. And so we're gonna have to run this command. I'll leave a link down below in the, in the comment section so this way you don't have to try typing this out. It's, uh, it's quite lengthy. And once we do that, it's gonna download this uh, package. And depending on your speed, this could take a couple seconds like I just did for me, or it could take a minute or two, okay? And basically what we wanna do is we want to select number one. We need, the first thing we need to do is install Docker. So we're gonna install Docker by pressing one. And she's gonna load up Docker. This is a great uh, issue. I forgot a step, very important step. The first thing you need to do before even trying to load Flux is you're gonna do sudo and we're gonna switch users to our root user. And it's gonna ask you for that password again. And now we're loaded up as root. And you can see that change right here, right? We went from root from Viper or from Viper to root, right? So now we can run that command. And we're gonna install Docker. And now it's gonna ask us for a Docker username. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Docker, there's some really good YouTube videos out there to, that will show you how this is a container within Linux. So we need a username strictly for this. And this username is gonna be our Flux username moving forward. I'm going to type Viper Flux, oops, Flux. And then I'm gonna say, okay. And now it's copying files and it's asking for a new password for this user. I do not recommend this password being the same as your password that you use to set up your server. Because if something got compromised on the server, then they can get into your flex this way. So I would highly suggest a different password. And it's gonna make me type it again to make sure I typed it right. 
and now I'm in there. So it's doing updates to the system. There is no really update. So it's just going to start loading Docker now. Now this will take some time and it's all going to be dependent on what kind of processor you have in your system and how much memory and what, how fast is your hard drive. So the bare minimum on the flux cumulus, this could take a little bit longer. And if you have a little bit faster unit, it'll be a little bit faster. So your mileage will vary depending on uh, your uh, server that you have. Now it's asking me, so it's loaded Docker. Now it's asking me if I want to switch to this user. And yes, we want to switch to this user because we're going to do everything now inside this Docker container. All right. So now you'll notice that usernames changed again. We're at flux or Viper flux at Viper mining flux dot is our box. Okay. Now we need to do that. And I don't, yeah, you're going to have to copy and paste that uh, command again. And we're going to go in here. One hour later. All right, so we're almost there. Let's see, 17 seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right, now it's unpacking. All right, so this is going to take a little bit to unpack this. So I'll catch you on the other side of that. Okay, now that it's unpacked everything, it is moving into installing the rest of the depositories, and then it will do some benchmarking as well. And now we're actually installing the Flux OS itself, and it's starting the daemon, and then at that point, it will sync the chain. Uh, its estimate is about five minutes. Later. One eternity later. All right, so now that the block is synced, it's asking us if we want to do auto updates for the block. And I'd highly recommend yes. Otherwise, you'd have to keep up on it. And if your node falls off, you're back in the bottom of the, uh, of the pile then for your rewards. Would you like to enable notifications? Yes. Select, deselect, item space to switch, okay. Okay, now that it installed Flux software and uh, OS, <clears throat> there are a couple questions that you may or may not get, and it depends on the flavor of the server you have. Now, my server, if you noticed, I have the latest version of uh, Ubuntu server. So it knew and it was smart enough to understand that and talk, communicate with Docker that I am in on port 22. You may get asked if I'm using port 22 for my SSH connection. You wanna say yes to that, okay? And if it asks you for a swap file, I would say yes to that as well. And then you sh will come to this. And now it wants to generate our flux key, okay? So we need to insert our flux key and we need to go over to Zellcore to do that. Zellcore wallet. And you'll notice I already, I, while I was waiting for this, I, I went ahead and did this. All you gotta do is uh, add in whatever name that you wanna call this node. And then the IP address, that's the public IP address. Don't add the port or anything like that. Just put in the public IP address that the node is sitting at. And then you hit click save. Okay. Now, after you've done that, we need to go check our benchmarks, make sure everything passed. We do that by grabbing that IP address and the port that the system is on. And we can find that right here underneath, uh, back on our terminal. And I'm out of the way. So let me see if I can. Uh, just turn myself off for a second here. And I can't do that. So the IP address is here along with the port. And then you would put this into your browser. And it will bring it to the Flux dashboard that's sitting on your node right now.
Then what you want to do is you want to go to benchmarks and then benchmark and get stats. And we can see that our node is online. It's a cumulus node and it's connected. This means that it's passed all its benchmarks. It is ready to go. Okay, so to start our node, what we're going to do is click on Cellcore ID. And that's going to sign a message. And start our Zellcore. So my Zellcore is starting. It wants me to log in, so we're going to log in. And it wants our two-factor authentication. All right, so now it's going to ask you to sign the message. Okay, so we're going to sign this and we're going to send it. Oh. There we go. And we can close that. So now we can go to apps. Flux node. And we'll say start. And yes, we want to start our flux node. And it says closing. So it'll sit here and turn. <clears throat> I think it updates every 30 seconds or every minute. And then we'll tell you that uh, your flux node is up and running. So we're just going to close this because there is another way for us to check our status. And that is, I can find my browser. This is by our browser here. So now if we go to dashboard and then hit refresh, and you see Flux has just started. Flux is running with limited capabilities. So it's gonna take a little bit for it to turn around and start to uh, uh, before it's fully up on the network. We can this will and it will take a minute or two. Unfortunately, um, it will. It's just not like that. Unfortunately, the other thing that you have to make sure as well is if we go back to our flux node. is pull this down and you need to make sure you have at least 100 confirmations in here so we have 901 right now otherwise you can't start the flux now okay let's see where we're at still churning and that's fine it'll take a couple of minutes but I just want to thank everybody to that has been watching. I hope this helped everybody in understanding how to load a flux node from start to finish. And once uh, once this node's up and running, you just basically a couple of things you have to do. One, make sure your node is always on, right, and it's functioning correctly. You can come off network briefly can do updates to the OS or to security patches and things like that. However, you need to make sure that you're right back up. You need to make sure you have a stable internet connection. If your internet connection keeps dropping, you may have a problem. Every time your node comes off, if, 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 the, no, if the nodes move, you may lose your place in line and then you're just gonna be back at the bottom. If you come off any snippet of time, I guarantee you'll get in the bottom again. And I don't know how many nodes are out there now, but it's a lot. Um, the thousand, when they lowered the, um, the requirements for how much flux you needed, the number of nodes have increased. So more and more people are doing this. Plus now the mining's you know, not as profitable. People are looking for ways to deploy their hardware. Uh, you can easily take a GPU rig and make a flux 
note out of it. The only thing you may have to change is the SSD drive because a lot of us just bought 25 gigabyte or, or 64 gigabyte SSD drives because they're like five bucks, you know, out on Amazon. But you'll need to do that. Or like I did, I chose to do this because this is a lot less power than my rig. Even my rig with no GPS, if I, if I ran it headless, because uh, a lot of the motherboards, if you don't put a GPU in it, you can still grab a, a, a basic uh, HPI, HDMI uh, port out However, they take a lot more power. They're not as efficient. And the HP uh, boxes are much more efficient. Uh, depending on what it's doing, I, I think the max I ever saw it do was 19 watts. I mean, this is great, I mean, as far as I'm concerned. So you're not going to get rich off doing a, a cumulus node, but what you are doing is if you are mining flux and you're doing a node, you now have both sides of that coin in a sense you're getting rewarded for money and you get rewarded for doing the the node and then you could build even a bigger bag and go up to the next level of nodes or just get a bunch of 1000 nodes until you get to 12,500 I believe uh, flux that you need but that is basically what it is the other thing you want to make sure you do is and what I have on all my nodes is I have a battery backup power supply my ISP is a fiber connection, so it even, when it, even if we lose power, that ISP connection is still there as long as I can have battery backup to the modem and to my computers, which I do. That allows me to keep my node up even during a power outage, okay? Um, and depending where you live, like here in Florida, Lord, we are the lightning capital of the world, and what happens is we get a lot of... Um, lightning and sometimes our power will flicker every so often just enough to bring everything or reset everything so by having the the uh, UPSs on everything I don't have that problem also note that you want to make sure this is always running 100% and if you're using again these little HP boxes they are pretty much fanless <laughs> so you will need to make sure they're in an area where they're getting good air circulation, right? So you're going to have that uh, consideration as well, including even if you do a, uh, an old mine rig. The other thing that you need to make sure in consideration is, is that it doesn't, you're not turning it off accidentally. So I have mine in my studio off to the side, and it doesn't allow anybody to play with it. And I can guarantee that it'll stay up. The other thing that you might want to try to make sure you do, depending on what kind of house you have, the like in my house, when I had this built, they turn around and put uh, light switches on some of the outlets so you can put a lamp on it. Make sure it's not one of those switches where somebody actually turns off your node on you. There's a couple of little things that I've ran into for different things. Hopefully you liked the video. Please subscribe, and I will catch you on the next video.